Hello, my name is Susanne Rosenberg and I'm a folk singer, a researcher and a professor of folk singing at the Royal College of Music in Stockholm, Sweden. And this is a presentation of some of the findings of an artistic research project called Folk Song Love, a project that is supported by the Swedish Research Council. The idea of the project is to use interactive uh, group sessions to explore different ways by which improvisation stimulates an attitude towards the song by which it is understood as a cognitive framework that is recreated by the singer in the performance moment. The result is evaluated by its usefulness in an artistic setting. And the subtitle of the project is Deconstruction improvisation and flow. Uh, and the deconstruction part of this project means that it takes its point of origin in formulated certain conceptual qualities that are found in traditional Swedish folk songs and singing and improvisation as described in this picture. It includes orality, communication, interactivity, social interaction, perception, uh, the feeling of a holistic uh, variation, of course, and presence. And also regarding this, the song as a cognitive frame, where you have the tonality, the singing style and the traditional forms that could be heard in call, medieval Scandinavian ballads, lyric songs, lullabies, folk call, chorals and etc. And uh, the quotation from Bronson is very much uh, a kind of a leading star for me in this project. What such singers have in mind is a melodic idea, not a note-for-note -note record. And what anyone else will learn from their singing is inevitably likewise the idea of the song, because it's too fluid for any other kind of record to be captured. So that is kind of a starting point for the project. Improvisation is a core and um, it, it uses particular developed improvisational methods reflecting traditional songs cognitive frames then. Um, not taking inspiration so much from jazz or pop or any other but from the traditional forms and the cognitive frames of the folk singing. Starting from the formulated context, uh, the improvisation setting here, uh, it's a session. Uh, it's a physical place, a room like this. It's a temporal space, a defined time span. Uh, it goes in a circle. It's a performance situation, meaning that everybody contributes. It's a bit risky. Um, it's group interaction and collective improvisation as a foundation. And just listen to, we, we're just going to listen to some improvisational, traditional music then from Sweden. This is Herding Call, Kulning, uh, that is improvised music outdoors in the summer pastures, used as a communication tool between people and their, their animals, like their cows and sheep and so on. Let's listen. Mm -hmm. Just a very, very small example, but it's improvisation and it's from the tonality and the frames of the herding call. Uh, and then we have the flow uh, in this project. Uh, there it is used flow inducing concepts such as risk, play, reorientation, mimicry, real life performance, feedback when developing the artistic methods that have been used, these are kind of foundations for that. Um, and that means that 
the idea is to get people into this flow channel the place where you are not too scared but not bored uh, and that you can uh, challenge your your skills actually and then in the best of, of the worlds you ha you end up in this flow channel where you don't think so much and this is also a way of showing it risk play real life performance reorientation mimicry and feedback and this is actually me on the lower right there singing with, together with Eva Eriksson, a famous singer from the middle of Sweden. Uh, so a session then, um, a folk song lab session always starts with a method called mirror singing, meaning that the participants mirror the person who is improvising in the exact moment. So mimicking uh, the exact thing that are improvised in the moment. The mirror singing could also include instructions of what we are doing. Uh, and there are no other verbal or, or written instructions in a folk song lab session, not in beforehand or not after. So let's listen to a small excerpt of a folk song lab session. In the act of improvising, the leader, uh, in this case me, is uh, singing um, and mimicked immediately by the persons in the, in the session uh, while I improvise. Improvise your own melody and lyrics at the same time as the others. So the methods that I introduce by singing in this uh, uh, session is herding called talking, that is the tonality, um, meandering with lyrics, everybody goes their own way. Uh, and then of course mirror singing then in the beginning. A session could last for at least 20 minutes without breaks and sometimes up to one hour without any breaks. And uh, in this project all sessions have been recorded sometimes with just a simple mobile phone or a separate but sometimes also with separate microphones or even larynx microphones that you put on your larynx and then you can actually identify what everybody is doing and other measurements that such as blood uh, blood pressure pulse and breathing patterns has also been uh, measured at some occasions after a session then, the participants reflect on the, the, their own ex experience here. And sometimes this is followed by a verbal reflection uh, where the focus lies on each participant giving a very short statement of meaning. Uh, was it what was meaningful, interesting, memorable, touching, moving, inspiring, exciting and so on. Since the project started in 2014, actually, and for the last three, four years, it has been uh, funded by the state, uh, um, by the Research Council. Uh, there have been more than 80 folk song lab sessions with group sizes varying from four persons up to at least 80 or even more persons. 
The participants have been both amateurs and professionals in folk singing or in singing generally. And the sessions have been conducted in Sweden as well as in, in Ireland, Finland, Estonia, and also with people from different origin. This gives, of course, a very a huge material. So let's listen now to another example of a Folk Song Lab session with only four singers. And this is what I would say the inner circle of this project. It's Sofia Sandén, Eva Rune, Maria Miskeld and myself. Uh, and we are improvising a pulse-based improvisation in the form of a Scandinavian medieval ballad. We dive quite a bit into the session and uh, a melody and refrain is already established and are used throughout the session. The thing is we improvise both, both the lyrics and the storyline itself with a method called end rhyme at any cost and weaving reuse, meaning that you should reuse things that you have been saying before um, and yet take but in another wording. And then we take turns in uh, telling the story. <laughs> Let's stop there. So, um, and I think that even if you don't understand the storyline or the text because it's in Swedish, uh, you can figure out that this way of improvising is demanding, but it's also fun and also developing. And it trains you in the ability to look upon the song as something that is a uh, uh, something that you hold as a story in your head and not word by word remembering a song. And that is one of the important points of this project also. Uh, and you can see here just some words that appear many times uh, in end rhyming, which, which is quite demanding. Uh, and there is a specific article that I've written about this part of the project with uh, uh, end rhyming and also one specific article about inclusiveness that are also an important part of the course of this project. So you could say that the Folk Song Lab project then is about trying to learn how to treat the song as something that could be varied every time you sing it. But you, you do that through the improvisation and it's learning by doing. So it's experimenting, uh, documenting what you do and then reflect on that and improvise again in all of this in a collaborative setting. And improvising from cognitive frames and foundation, creating music and new artistic forms for today. And maybe see if we can cha be challenged into be more free in the role uh, uh, regarding what is a song. And let's say something about the results then. What methods has been useful? How can they be described and delimited? And how does the experience in folk singing affect the result? Uh, what are the differences between improvisation, uh, only melody or melody with lyrics or phrase-based singing versus pulse-based singing? And how does the experience in folk singing affect the participants' flow? Uh, and what do the participants highlight in the reflections regarding time, methods, and so on? Many participants in the sessions show signs of having experienced what are typical for a person in flow and using flow parameters. The feeling of being in the present and forgetting time. The time disappeared. It was perceived as shorter than an hour. 
thought, should I sit here and waste time? And suddenly, almost an hour disappeared in a flash. Time stood still. This feeling goes mostly for when improvising melodies uh, uh, or so solo or simultaneously or with or without lyrics when it comes to phrase-based singing. However, participants also comment that they experience no flow when improvising a narrative with end rhymes at the same time. It's much harder. Uh, it seems as if, to a much greater extent, the improvising narrative and end rhyme were simultaneously reflection is necessary during the action. It requires some kind of slow thinking and the use of categories and analytic thinking, uh, more demanding. Um, uh, and if you are familiar with medieval ballad, then it's much more easy, of course, because then you have all these structures already. Uh, the aim of the Folk Song Lab session is to promote and provide space for the singer's creativity in the collaborative setting without using any written instruction, but instead presenting different methods of collective folk song improvisation by doing, through practice and participation. Furthermore, one important perspective is that these sessions include several singers, all with different types of level of, of expertise. This promotes a learning experience for all participants in a session, even the professional ones. The circle and collective improvisation supports the possibility for anyone participating to learn without any explanation, even if they are familiar with the tonality and the forms. It is obvious that knowledge of folk singing affects the results, such as I said that it's hard to rhyme and use weaving reuse methods if you are less familiar with the form of the Scandinavian medieval ballad. Uh, the different methods promote different focus when improvising, as shown by the result. However, all the methods used in Folk Song Lab are deliberately designed primarily to stimulate challenging aspects such as rapid thinking and automated skills. Uh, the singer used their tested knowledge when improvising and at the same time pushed the boundaries of their ability using the, the flow-inducing tools that I created, thereby promoting learning new skills that may increase their ability. The sessions are carried out in a kind of a real life situation that is quite risky, very close to a performance setup. One outcome is that methods that require presence, presence and total attention in the moment, such as simultaneously mirror singing, seem to work better than first listening to an improvised phrase and then mimicking. Intuitive, present, in the moment easier to sing directly. It becomes a form of meditation when you have total split vision, purely auditory. It feels like putting your voice in the hands of a person you mimic. And one positive participant uh, uh, reflected uh, of mirror singing like this. As when you do drawing exercise, when you learn to draw, you can change and draw with the wrong hand. Then you will draw what you see and not the symbols that you would do otherwise. And researchers in neuroscience speculate that we, in our brains, have a neurological system, mirror neurons, that binds together actions, perceptions, languages, and our ability to learn to speak and sing through mimicry. This would allow us to anticipate the action and intention of others and communicate and understand simultaneously, which is a wonderful thing. There is also new research that points out that although visual impressions hold most of our perceptual capacity, this is what we have learned, in comparing studies between visual and audio stimulation, the, voices, the voice ability to uh, convey emotions takes over. So can that fact that mirror singing works also with closed eyes uh, be related to that kind of research findings? 
one thing that has shown to be of importance is the length of the session. And more than 20 minutes seem to give a result of rest, concentration, a pause and the possibility for flow and also let go. Uh, and one can wonder how often any one of us does something without a break for more than 20 minutes without looking at the cell phone or checking the emails. Keeping that concentration for such a long time as maybe 50-60 minutes is challenging and participants feel both exhausted and refreshed. Fun and creative with improvisation in a group at the same time, you become a part of something everyone participates instead of one by one. Then you can let yourself go for a while. Just rest in that you are a small part of something and that everybody contributes. Contributes. A curiosity is also awakened to listen. During this Folksong Lab project, methods has been developed and those who seem to be useful when improvising and creating new music have been described and given names so that they will be possible for also other persons to use. So like uh, uh, mirror singing, weaving reuse, meandering, herding call talk, etc. And I would like to end with another way to present that kind of result, the methods, uh, and regard Folksong Lab more like an ongoing finding of a path uh, and a, a tree of methods. So, thank you for your attention and I will be happy to take questions and reflections, of course. <laughs>